Welcome to this edition of Wild and Wonderful, where we check out some unusual artifacts in the Hall of Fame's collection. I'm here in the archives with our senior curator of exhibitions and collections, Eric Stroll. Eric, we're looking at some weapons today. Uh, three items that uh, are indeed weapons and were used by uh, three different Hall of Famers. So why don't we go through some of them? Beautiful shotgun, nice decorative uh, stamp work on the barrel. Uh, and this shotgun belonged to Hall of Fame pitcher Rube Waddell. Now Waddell, uh, most famously known for pitching with the Philadelphia Athletics in the early part of the 20th century, uh, he indeed imbues the definition of crazy left-handed pitcher. Rube Waddell was, by all standards, uh, a piece of work. This guy had a wicked curveball, wicked uh, fastball, was probably one of the most dominating fastball uh, 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 pitchers and lefty pitchers in the earliest part of, of uh, professional ball in the early part of the 20th century. Waddell in 1904 uh, struck out 349 batters, uh, which was the record that lasted until broken by Sandy Koufax 61 years later. But in terms of what he's most well known for, it's his character. The guy really was zany. Historian Lee Allen summed up what his year in 1903 was like, and I think it's very entertaining, so I'll summarize it for you. 1903 started off uh, sleeping in a firehouse in Camden, New Jersey, and it ended tending bar in Wheeling, West Virginia. In between, he won 22 games for the Philadelphia Athletics, played left end on a rugby team in Michigan. He toured the country in a melodrama called Stain of Guilt. He got married and divorced uh, in the same year from a woman from Lynn, Massachusetts. He saved another woman from drowning. He accidentally shot a friend through the hand, and he was bitten by a lion. This was all in 1903. Um, he was famous for wanting to lead parades. He loved fire engines. He would actually leave the ballpark running to chase fire engines down the street. And he had very famous pitching duels with Cy Young. Uh, Cy Young threw his perfect game against Rube Waddell in 1904. Then in 1905, they hooked up for a very famous 20-inning game, in which both of them pitched 20-inning complete game. And R Waddell got the game-winning RBIs and uh, won that contest. So. Just a tremendously interesting guy, tremendously interesting story. He loved to fish and hunt, and uh, often would, the minute his uh, pitching was done for the day, would leave and wouldn't even come back to the team till the next day he was up. He drove managers crazy. The only person who ever really knew how to handle him was Connie Mack. Um, but it is an appropriate item to have for him because he was such a good outdoorsman. So that's a definitely an interesting and odd artifact in the Hall of Fame collection. Now, Waddell wasn't the only Hall of Famer who enjoyed hunting. Harry Wright did as well. Yep, Harry Wright enjoyed hunting. He was another great outdoorsman. This is a hunting knife that belonged to Harry Wright. It's even got his initials, um, or his name, actually engraved on the uh, front face there with, its, with his um, deer horn or deer antler handle. Harry Wright uh, is, you know, could be credited as one of the, the, mo the, the fathers of modern baseball playing, for sure. Um, most significant contribution probably being connected to the Cincinnati Red Stockings teams of the late 1860s. The first all openly professional paid uh, baseball team was the 1869 Cincinnati Red Stockings, which he was uh, the manager uh, was a manager of and played for as well. This was the really the impetus for the start of pro baseball. The following year in 1871, the National Association becomes the first all professional league. Harry Wright was also, uh, you know, one of the first to do many things. Um, some argue that he's the first to in, uh, instill uh, pregame batting practice, hitting fungos uh, to practice uh, defense, doing things like the double steal, coaching players to do uh, defensive backup on the field during plays in case something went awry. Um, but he's also credited with being someone who felt very much uh, that the integrity of the game was important. People should play honestly, people should play and live cleanly. Um, and so he imbued that in all that he brought to the game. And also in the Hall of Fame's collection, a slightly bigger knife owned by a probably also important founding father of the game. This is a machete that was owned uh, by Ban Johnson. Now, if you think about um, who the most powerful person in the game of baseball was for the first 20 years of uh, the 20th century, 1900 or so to 1920, uh, I think unequivocally you could probably say it was Ban Johnson. Ban Johnson started as a sports writer in Cincinnati in the 1880s, and uh, Charles Comiskey uh, was the manager of the Cincinnati National League at that time, so he would often report on 
on those teams, um, and therefore him and Comiskey got to know each other very well, became good friends. When the American League was finally formed in 1901, he was of course the first president, uh, and he ruled the American League sternly, strictly, uh, for 27 years, from 1901 to 1927. He instilled what he thought was a little bit more discipline uh, in the American League, make it a little bit more family-friendly atmosphere. Um, and that started to show up almost immediately in the gate receipts. Um, and once the American League established itself, the National League, by 1903, realized they weren't going away and that they were the, indeed to there to stay. Um, so then you start to see things like the World Series. But the, Van Johnson, again, an important figure in baseball history and, and, uh, and also a Hall of Famer. So three interesting artifacts from three very uh, important um, and, uh, and powerful people in the game. Thank you, Eric, and thank you for joining us on Wild and Wonderful. You can learn more about Hall of Famers on our website at baseballhall.org.